Okay, today is the reality check of the lockdown. The first thing I'm going to talk about is experiences and emotions that you're going through with a reality check in the first two weeks of the lockdown. I've been watching friends and family in different parts of the U.S. and in Europe and watching very closely how things are progressing because for me, it has felt like a very painful deja vu because I've already gone through it and then I'm watching you go through it and I can see what's going to happen next. Um, also, at the end of that section, I'm going to share my COVID challenge. I've put together something that's in the comments below that you could download and print out for all of your um, family members in your home. And then I'm going to talk about the reality check that we are going through right now in Italy. And most of you that know me know that I'm always the most optimistic person. I'm always looking for the most positive things and looking for the blessings and trials. But I'm going to tell you how it really feels right now and the reality check that we are going through and how it really feels in Italy right now. And at the end of this video, I'm going to also share small little video interviews with each of my kids so that you can hear from them how it's been feeling for them and how they feel right now. So, andiamo. Okay, so that first week, you're dealing with a lot of emotions. First of all, you've tried to stockpile and get all the food that you need to hunker down and be in lockdown. You've got to figure out all your schedules and all of your work and school and your normal life, how you're going to work that out from home. But let's talk about the fun things that you're missing out on. Maybe you had a trip. Maybe you had a wedding. Maybe there was um, you had front row tickets for your favorite concert or you've worked three years for an athletic competition or a marathon. Maybe you're a senior in high school and you have so many things that were going for you and graduation, what's that? You know, what's next with that? Um, so many of those exciting things that are now put on hold. And let's talk about the painful things. Maybe you've realized, I'm now unemployed. Maybe there's a funeral in your family and you don't get to be together. You have to watch your funeral um, virtually. Maybe there's um, a, you're planning to see somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, and now you don't know when you're going to see them. So many of these emotions are hitting you. So you're trying to just figure out the situation. Number one, deal with all the emotions, happy, sad, frustration, depression, anger, um, and many decisions. You've been faced with a ton of decisions all week based on things you don't really understand. But then there's that underlying stress. It's there. There's this underlying stress in the background that you and your family and your loved ones are under a threat. It's there. Whether you're worried about it or not, it's still in the back of your mind and it's something you can't understand. You're sorting things out and that reality check hits you and all those emotions. You've made all those decisions all week. And then what do you do? Then you binge on Netflix for three or four days, your kids are on video games, you're talking to friends and family nonstop, you're watching the news all day long on social media and trying to just absorb it all and figure it all out and stay in your pajamas for two or three days, I don't know, but that's when that reality check hits you. You realize you just have to get out. <laughs> You need to go for a run. You need to go for a drive. Go for a hike. Get out of town and just clear your head. Separate yourself from all the worries and the stress. And that's exactly what we did. We went to Cinque Terre and we are so glad we did. I mentioned it on my um, coronavirus update episode two and I put pictures and you could see what we did at the end of the video. And we were seriously jumping for joy. Like, we did not realize how bad we needed it. We just needed to clear our head and have some fresh air. And we're so glad we did, because shortly after, we were on complete lockdown and could not leave. So, after that big reality check hits you, what do you do? Number one is, you get up. Your world has just been turned upside down and disrupted, and you're emotional, and then you get up. You get up, you get dressed, you put on your makeup, and you take on this challenge and this change that's just happened to you. 
Number two is your schedule. So it took us about a week and a half to work out all the kinks and get the things sorted out with the schedules for the kids' class schedule and lessons online and which devices each of them are going to use and where they're going to study in the house. And then I highly recommend that you keep your schedule the same. If you don't and you let all the days blend together, you lose track and your mind and your body has a hard time adjusting and it just blends. We always have movie night on Saturday night as a family and then the Sabbath. That's our day of rest. We have church and uh, we put on our dress or our nice clothes. We get dressed to do um, church online and then it's a day of rest, we do journaling, and we do the things we normally did for the Sabbath day. And then Monday, we hit it again. We start school, we get up early, we have our exercise schedule, we plan out our meals, and it really helps a lot to just keep yourself in the schedule that you're used to the best that you can. It just looks differently. And number three is figure out what it is you're going to get out of this situation and this experience and what things you want to accomplish. Maybe that's going to be that you're going to get in shape, you're going to spend more time with your kids, you're going to do more journaling, you're going to organize the house, you're going to finish a home improvement project. All these different things, all those things that you always said, oh, when I have time for that, here you go. So look for a way that you can make that great. Okay, so what I put together is Heather's COVID challenge. I, I call it challenge because I've learned with my kids, if you call anything challenge, you're like, oh, I got to do that. So anyway, this is Heather's COVID challenge. I've made it into a document in an Excel file, and it's down on the comments below, so you can download it and print it out. Print it for everyone in your house. And what it is is you can put your name, your lockdown date, um, what your challenge topic is going to be. So maybe it's I'm going to read a lot and then figure out what each box represents. So maybe it's how many page chapters you read or how many areas of my house that I cleaned out or how many new skills I taught my kids or um, may, how many letters I've read to, read, written to friends and family. You get to decide. And there's way more than you need. I really hope there's more than you need. Hopefully we only get this far on here, but because it's open-ended, it's an opposite kind of goal. There's no time frame. You don't know how long this gonna, is going to take, but this is designed for you to be able to track what it is you worked on and measure. So you can see, hey, I did that, and look what I got out of this situation. Then right here you have a place where you can mark tally marks of how many days you're in lockdown, and here you can record your emotions. And you don't need to write on this one every day. Um, just like when your mood changes. So maybe you'll put day three, I was stressed out, everything's crazy. Day five, we got this, we can do this. Or maybe day 10 is depression, anger, or sadness. But you'll be surprised. It really is nice to write those things down because your, your emotions, they change. And then at the end is a review. So this is designed so you can keep it and put it into your journal and always remember this. You'd be surprised how things change. And at the end it says, um, what I will do to commemorate when this is over. And you don't need to fill that one out right away. I would suggest think about that for a little while. What, how are you changing through this experience and what is going to mean the most to you? And then here you put the date of the end of your lockdown, how many days you were, what you accomplished with the challenge. And at the end, how has this affected me in a positive way and what am I going to change in my life? because of this experience. So I hope you really like this. Make it fun. It's a great way to just track what it is you're doing. Um, this is the sample page. On the printout you'll see two um, worksheets. This is the sample so you can see how I did it and the instructions. But I hope it'll be a fun thing for you so make it exciting. Make it fun for you and your family. Follow it together. Encourage each other. Like my COVID challenge, while you're scrolling down, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. And if you like the ideas, if they're helpful, the suggestions that I might be sharing and you find it helpful, please hit the subscribe button. That'll keep me going. And the bell, because during this COVID issue, I don't have a regular schedule of these videos, but the bell will notify you every time I have something new. Okay, so after you get everything figured out and your routine and everything Still remember safety precautions. You're not going out, you're not around other people, and you think you're safe. And this is one that hit me after two and a half weeks, three weeks in lockdown. 
that I realized, oh wow, I really need to be careful because they're finding the germs can last up to nine days on metal surfaces. I know everyone in the U.S. is now like, oh, gas pumps. Everybody's concerned about gas pumps, so you should be. But that's also all the hardware in your house, all the metal handrails, doorknobs, all the th and surfaces. So you need to keep wiping down everything that you can in surfaces. Um, we're finding also, I wasn't thinking about it, but we're tracking things in on our shoes. So when one person goes out for things you need occasionally, leave your shoes at the door, mop the floors regularly. And I keep a can of disinfectant spray by the door. We were still, we're getting, still today, we're getting deliveries to the house. So when I get a box that comes to the house, I spray down the box. Um, all of those kinds of things are your keys your money, your phone, wash those things regularly as much as you can. Like put up little signs and reminders around your house. Don't forget because we are habit people. We have habits. Um, wash your hands. I'm going to say that over and over. Just start getting in that habit. They're saying to wash your hands every 20 minutes. So if you're doing that, it helps because we all touch our face. It's something we do. Even when you're trying really hard, you don't realize it. You touch your face all the time. And you can probably see in this video, I've already touched my face. I don't know how many times. So if you're washing regularly, that will help to cut down on it because you're going to touch your face. You can't just stop even when you're trying really hard. Um, before you put on your makeup, before you put it in your contacts or take them out, I've done this for years. Honestly, I don't wash every single time. And so every time you're about to touch your face, wash your hands. Every time you're about to eat something, not just when you're going to prepare dinner or everybody's coming to the table for dinner, everybody washed. More than that, if you're going to pick up an apple, if you're going to take a little snack, wash your hands first. They're finding that is really helping a lot in cutting down spreading of the germs, even in hospitals. They should be washing a lot more than they have been. You get out of habit and you think you're fine. So wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, like as much as you can and keep disinfectant spray around. So also the hand sanitizer if you have any left, um, as much as you can. But even though you're in lockdown, you're still not completely safe from germs. So keep that in mind. It's something we weren't thinking about right at first. Okay, a few other things that you can work on. Take lots of vitamins if you're not already. Vitamin C is very important. Take a lot of that if you can still get it. Um, exercise is very important. Even if you didn't exercise at all before, you're not going in and out of the house and running around. There's, you're going to notice a difference. So, And if you have a yard or home gym, be glad. <laughs> but exercise is very important. You don't want to be little tubby after the end of this. None of us want that, right? So you can see on Heather Evertson Italian Travels on Facebook, I list a lot of the articles that I refer to and where I get my information. So you can follow that to get some of the um, good facts of the things that I'm talking about. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the reality check that we're going through here in Italy right now. Um, honestly, it's been really hard for me to get this one put together. It's taken me a few days to get my mind around it, how I want to put talk about it and that I can talk about it. It's been very rough. It's been emotional. My mom was telling me, Heather, you need to share this and you need to paint a picture and describe exactly what it's like because people do not realize what it really is like to be in full lockdown like you are. You're in lockdown and your school and work is now at home. It's not at all like what it is here. They are not messing around. And a lot of us always joke about in Italy how nobody really uh, obeys all the laws and they don't enforce all the laws. But they're taking this very seriously. So we, can, we do not have the right to leave the house. We can only leave to get groceries and medicine. And when we leave, we have to have a document that has all of our um, identification, address, everything about us, date of birth, where we're born, all of that stuff, and why we're out. And if you go out and it's not a legitimate reason, you can have a fine and you could get a criminal record, which is not like in the U.S. where you just get a, you get a little fine slapped on, you pay it, and it's over. 
the criminal record stays with you forever and they're taking it very seriously. So um, we now cannot even go for runs. It used to be you could go out two by two, go for uh, some exercise. If you do go out somewhere, you, only one person can go out to get food. Or if you go out and drive somewhere, you can only have two people in your car. Um, so I'm going to tell you an example. Two weeks ago, we, my daughter is struggling with a really bad allergy that's causing very painful headaches that never stop. Um, nausea and a lot of different things and we found out through a friend that she needs a certain type of allergy medicine which we cannot find anywhere here. We found a military family was able to find this particular allergy medicine for us at the base but they live in Lucca and so I looked at the list of rules and things that we can and can't do. I have a friend who is a, in the Italian military and um, is working um, security and so I everything that I do I ask him Max can I do this or can I do that and he's like yeah yeah you could do that you'll be fine because I'm going from my house to their house to get a medicine I can't get anywhere else and I'm coming back home and so um, I've I of course was like okay kids we're all gonna get in the car we're just going from our house to their house but we're gonna it's a reason we can get out and we're gonna just go for a ride and so we were kind of were excited about just getting out. But our friends were telling us in Luca every time, because they could still go to work for what they did, every time they went out, they were stopped at the freeway by the police. And they could go because they had a legitimate reason and they had proof of the work situation. And um, they're telling me that, and I'm like, okay, well, I checked. I made sure we can go. But mind you, I am like the only person on the freeway. All the streets are empty. There's no other cars except I would see buses, taxis, a grocery store delivery trucks, and the cops, police, and ambulances. That's it. So I'm on a freeway going out to their house in Luca, and no one else is on the freeway but the police. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Okay, so when we left, Max texted me and said, by the way, Heather, you know you can only have two people in the car? <laughs> which no, I didn't realize, and we were already on our way, and there's seven of us in the car. So I'm just like, oh, great, we're gonna get stopped, what's gonna happen? So we were kind of stressed out, and then when we went to pick up the medicine, our friends had told us that there was a military woman up in Aviano, which is north of Venice, and she left the house with her two little kids to go get groceries, and they gave her a 600 euro fine and said, you should not have left the house with your children. Only you can leave to get food. And she got this fine. Okay, so I'm thinking through my head, oh my gosh, we are gonna, we're totally gonna get stopped. What's gonna happen? And the kids are all stressing out. And so we're driving home and sure enough, we're just outside of Florence, about 20 minutes out of Florence. And we're the only ones on the freeway with cops and they're following us for a long time. And then they finally pulled us over and they sit on their loudspeaker, get off this exit. So we got off, and when I'm paying the toll, all the kids are freaking out. They're like, Mom, what should we do? Should we hide? Should we get out of the bench? What's going to happen? And I'm freaking out. I'm like, just be quiet. You're stressing me out. I don't know. Just be quiet. So we pull over, and we come up, and they said, okay, give me your um, documents. And I passed the documents, and I told my son, don't say anything in Italian, because my kids speak like perfect Florentine Italian. And I was like, don't say anything in Italian. So I just gave him this stuff, and then I said in my stupid American way, I'm like, I parlato in inglese? You know, like, uh, <laughs> I just tried to play the dumb card. And it worked, thank goodness. And they were over there like, oh, Madonna, loro e sognieri, oh, mamma mia. Just let them go. Whew. So they let us go. They just, they could see I was in a rental car and we went. But then we still had to get home and we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to get stopped when we come into the neighborhood. And what if they stop us in town? The kids were freaking out. And after that, oh my gosh, like, it was not worth it. That was so nerve-wracking. And so this is the case. I have gone out a couple other times when I had to take someone to the train station. Another friend was leaving, and I was not going to let her go on in a taxi. 
So I drove her to the train station. I was able to do that. It was close to home. I had the documents. And so I've gone out for a few other times, but it is not worth it. <laughs> so also on lockdown, we're pretty confined. Now, we do have a big place for Italian standards because we are right in the city. And so our house is big for a city apartment, but it's not that big. And my mom was saying, I never would have pictured that if you didn't explain it this way. We have to have exercise, but we have to be so clever and creative because we can't go out on runs anymore. No, they've stopped that. Um, and so we're, we can't do jumping jacks in our living room because on the main floor below us is a bank and there's, we're in an 18th century palazzo. And so the main floor of the bank, they have these gorgeous frescoes on the ceilings. And if we were to do jumping jacks, they would see a fresco on their floor when they came back. So uh, we can't do that. And we have stairs in our stairway outside the apartment. They're, uh, metal, they're marble and concrete stairs. And so we'll do stretches. I'll have to show you pictures. We'll do stretches and we'll try to do jumping jacks there. And we're on this small living room trying to do stretches and workouts. But... Yeah, it's just, it's different, and we can't go out, we can't run in the backyard. We don't have one of those. On social media there's been a little tradition of these flash mobs everybody goes to the back of their balcony and all these complexes and condominiums everybody's on their balcony singing one day or playing instruments or whatever um, that has just been for everyone an incredible release of emotions that everybody's needed and you might have seen it on Facebook and I've seen a lot of friends posting their things but um, from a distance, that might look really funny and cute, and oh, we love the Italian things, but for those of us here, it's just like what we needed to release that, those emotions. Okay, so if I could describe the reality check and the things that are going on right now, those of you that know me, I'm always very positive and trying to see the um, positive things in trials and hard things, um, but it's not easy right now and we're not laughing uh, my daughter she's a doll and she is an independent adult she lives in utah on her own and she sent me um a bunch of memes she's like mom you gotta read these and they were cute and they were funny um and that's something i try to always say let's look for the positive thing let's have a sense of humor but i was silent i was just quietly looking at them and she said sorry did I offend you and I was like no it's okay see it's just it's not funny right now it's heartbreaking to see so many people suffering all around us here um, in my Facebook social groups around Italy um, people that I know posting and saying different things please pray for my friend she's suffered from fighting this um, disease and now has COVID um, our school teacher just died our family doctor just died someone in our building just died five more are sick please pray for this person pray for this person and it's heartbreaking to see it happening right here in your own world the people in our neighborhood um, around Florence and the numbers are rising very fast. Now, at first I was thinking, okay, I am, I'm glad we're safe. I'm confident we're going to be fine. We're young, we're healthy. But it was breaking my heart to think of the people that are not, people that are struggling and that are weak and don't have good health. And the precious uh, elderly people we have here in Italy. But they're also finding, too, in Bergamo, 
they're just the first ones that are dying. But in Bergamo, young people, athletic people, very healthy people, people that have been in lockdown for three days, three weeks are dying or getting the disease, getting the virus. And then that hit me too, because I'm thinking about my family and people I care about in the U.S., people here, people that I know that can be affected by this. And this is not, this is not the news. This is, these aren't false and predictions. This is happening right here. And it's a lot different than you would think when you're going through it. And from a distance, it's easy to say, hey, be tough, be strong. You gotta be positive. But when you're actually going through it and you're staying home watching, this is not easy. So last week, they had sent all the missionaries home and all the workers of the temple home. And they said everyone but the temple president and his wife, which is the Pacinis. And they're wonderful friends of ours that we love a lot. And I felt like, okay, well, we're here. It'll, they, you know, they said, here we are. We'll be here. We're not leaving. And every other day, we would check in with each other and talk to each other. And then on Sunday morning, Julie called me and said, Heather, we've been called home. And she said, don't worry, we have Italian citizenship. We'll be able to come back and forth even if the orders don't open. We'll be able to come back, but for now we're going home. And I didn't realize how much that was going to affect me emotionally. It was like, whoa. I felt like that's a turning point. And I didn't realize how emotional I'd be with that, but... I kind of felt like, now I'm really alone, like, that's the end, like, if they're going home, I'm here on my own, um, but I felt like if they're going home, how long is our temple going to be close, and it's going to be a while, I, it was kind of a reality check, check that hit me emotionally, and I didn't realize that this could be, we could be in this for the long run, it could be a while, and still unknown. But it really hit me emotionally, and I didn't realize how much it would. And also, um, my husband, he left a month ago to the U.S. We were just right at the verge of pulling out of a very hard financial situation. I was excited about um, an incredible year. I was really gearing up for some good things. All my whole year got completely canceled within a week, a few weeks ago. Um, my husband was finally pulling out of this financial crisis he was also having, so he left a month ago to the U.S. to work on some of these projects and try to get more. And then the borders are closing, and he's been delayed, so at this point, we don't know how long he's going to be gone, and we don't know when he'll be back. And we're okay with that because we have done this long-distance things a lot in our family and in the past. Um, we're okay here at home, but hitting me like long term, like how long is this going to be? Our schools closed when we had to stay home, work at home. People still were not taking it seriously. They were still trying to do the things they wanted to do. They were still meeting with friends. What I would tell all of you is that even if don't wait for them to shut down for you, don't wait for them to regulate for you. Um, learn from things happening here in Italy and make things protect yourself. The best way I can describe it is that you have an invisible monster that is killing people all around you. You just don't know it yet. And that's the creepiest part is that we don't understand it and we don't realize it's getting worse. And um, to see the counts in Italy are much more than they were in China. So I think I can speak for most of the American expats living here to all of our friends in the U.S. is just stay home. Only one person needs to go out to get what you need. And don't go out unless you absolutely need to go out. Stay home, wash your hands, keep the house clean, and focus on your, your family. And so I hope maybe some of my tips, hope some of the things that I've mentioned can help you, maybe give you a different perspective of what it's really like being here. 
Um, and I hope and pray that it doesn't get to that. And I hope that maybe some of the things that I say can maybe help you to change some of your ideas and your habits um, to protect yourself. So for now, please hit the subscribe button and give it a presto. So when the day came, my family was focused on preparations and stocking up food and water. So the idea of my birthday kind of was somewhere else. Um, all my school friends got kept getting together since they all live out, out of town and away from where I live. So they got to kept, keep seeing each other and while, while my family had to stay home. And I spend most of the, my days um, on the computer, working on school and homework. But I enjoy doing video calls with my friends and seminary. Hi, my name is Kaisa Everton. I am 12 years old and I was a bit scared just at first because I was shocked. And then um, when they said mostly the older people were getting sick, after you get used to it, it's it's more like a normal thing that everyone's going through. But at the same time, it makes everyone understand, like, go through the same thing. And But I'm not doing video calls. They just give us a handful of homework. Yeah, you have to use a computer to do all the research. But I only have two computers in the house already, four people. Oh, yeah. Um, I do video calls with my with my professor, Valentina. She's my violin professor, and um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of ahead in my class, and so she gives me extra uh, extra scripts without telling anyone, or else <laughs> they'll get offended. But, so London, when we first were on alert, but not on full lockdown, what were some of your thoughts? I thought my parents were going crazy because no one around me was doing anything. No one was alerted. I didn't have a reason to like believe my parents, I guess, other than what some websites said and stuff like that. And... So it was kind of annoying because I wanted to stick to my routine like everyone else. I wanted to go to school, I wanted to go to the gym, I wanted to get everything I wanted to get done. But everyone was kind of alerted by this. And then eventually the whole country went on lockdown. So I guess in the beginning you can't really know and then you just find out. 
So what are your thoughts now? Um, I'm still annoyed because I've had to adapt to a completely different routine, classes online, working out at home, not leaving, being used to being out at least seven to eight hours a day and then being locked at home all day makes a difference. So, and it's annoying to have to adapt to things that don't depend on you. All right, so what do you think about it now? Now that we've been on lockdown for over 20 days. It's still annoying, but we can't <laughs> do anything about it. Um, I guess the only thing we can do is try to be cautious and do, a, do our own part to avoid longer staying at home. Right. Uh, at first, you know, hearing the numbers, it was worrying. And it was just more reason to be very careful where to go. And But it wasn't until, like, the actual lockdown that it was really annoying and I mean luckily we like just before it got really bad we went and got stocked up on lots of different foods you know so we'd have stuff in case there was a lockdown and then when lockdown happened all of the restaurants closed all of you know you know when you crave something you if you have the money you can go and get it in this case I craved a lot of stuff and I knew I couldn't go and get it Fact, right now, chicken nuggets sounds really good right now. Or sushi. Given my type of work, I sculpt in our basement, so I don't have to worry about that being a problem right now. But to sum up the past few weeks, I guess I can say stir crazy. And I cook, I help clean the house when I have a chance, and I sculpt. I had made plans and I was starting to get into, you know, riding my bike more, actually going out and going for a run, getting exercise. And that was about when the alerts started on where you had to stay at home and you couldn't go to restaurants, couldn't, out, couldn't go out and go meet with your friends or, you know, go to church even. So when we do, you know, stretching, warm up exercises and stuff like that on the stairs in the living room. And then once we're done with that, usually I'll sit down for like an hour or so and read some books to my little sisters. They've been getting into Harry Potter, so that's been fun. But other than that, mostly just... Basically, U.S. right now is where we were three weeks ago. And it's a matter of do their best to do their part to prevent the spread of the virus. And hopefully if people, you know, take that responsibility individually, then it'll be good for a collective solution to this big problem that's going on.